Greenland ice loss, new details revealed by UCI and NASA. University of California at Irvine, UCI. Less than a year after the first research flight kicked off NASA's Oceans Melting Greenland campaign, data from the new program are providing a dramatic increase in knowledge of how Greenland's ice sheets is melting from below. So it's not from above that it's melting, but from below, just like in the Antarctic. But it's melting from below in the Antarctic because of volcanic activity and warm bedrock. Now in the Arctic, in the North Pole, in Greenland, two new research papers in the Journal of Oceanography, including one by the University of California, Irvine, Earth System scientist Matthew Morlingham used OMG observations to document how meltwater and ocean currents are interacting along Greenland's coast, the west coast, north of, uh, as we see from the map, almost north Greenland, which is towards the Arctic, the North Pole. And it's interacting on Greenland's west coast to improve seafloor maps used to predict future melting and sea level rise. OMG is a five-year campaign to study the glaciers and oceans along Greenland's 27,000-mile coastline. Its goal is to find out where and how fast seawater is melting the glacial ice. Most of the coastline and seafloor around the ice sheet have never been surveyed, so the 2016 flights expanded scientists' knowledge of Greenland significantly. Future years of data collection will reveal the rate of change around the island. The water circulating close around the Greenland ice sheet is like a cold river floating atop a warm, salty ocean. The top 600 feet of colder water is relatively fresh and comes from the Arctic. Below that is the salt water that comes from the south, which is 6 to 8 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the fresher water above. The layers don't mix much because fresh water weighs less than seawater, the salt water, so it stays afloat above the salt water. If a glacier reaches the ocean where the sea floor is shallow, the ice interacts with frigid fresh water and melts slowly. Conversely, if the sea floor in front of the glacier is deep, the ice spills into the warm subsurface layers of salt water and may melt relatively rapidly. Satellite remote sensing cannot see below the surface to discern the depths of the seafloor or study the layers of water. OMG makes these instruments with shipboard and airborne instruments. Improving maps used to protect sea level rise. In the first paper, UCI's Morlingen used the OMG survey to improve maps of the bedrock under some of the West Coast glaciers. Glaciologists worldwide use these and other maps in modeling the rate of ice loss in Greenland and projecting future ice losses. A coastal glacier's response to a warming climate depends heavily not only on the depth of the seafloor in front of it, as explained above, but on the shape of the bedrock below it. Before OMG, virtually the only instruments the measurements Morlingham had of these critical landscapes were long, narrow strips of data collected along flight lines of research aircraft, sometimes tens of miles inland upstream from the glacier's ocean front. He has been estimating the shape of the bedrock outside of the flight lines with the help of other data such as ice flow speeds but formerly had no good way to check how accurate his estimates are at the coastline. Morlingen noted, quote, OMG data are not only improving our knowledge of the ocean floor, they're improving our knowledge of the topography of the land, too, end quote. This is because the campaign's seafloor survey reveals features under the ocean, such as troughs cut by glaciers during the last ice age which must continue upstream under the glacial ice. Therefore, Morlingen said, quote, by having OMG's measurements close to the ice front, I can tell whether I thought about the bed 
topography if, if it's correct or not, end quote. Wollegen was pleasantly surprised to discover that 90% of the glacier depths he had estimated were within 160 feet of the actual depth recorded by the OMG survey. Tracking meltwater far into the north. In the second paper, Ian Fenty of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory Pasadena, California, and co-authors, including Morlingham, tracked water up the west coast to see how it changed as it interacted with hundreds of melting coastal glaciers. They found that in northwest Greenland, cold and fresh water flowing into glacial fjords from the melting surface of the ice sheet is cooling the warmer subsurface water which circulates clockwise around the island. Clockwise around the island. In one instance, evidence for meltwater cooled waters was found in fjords 100 miles downstream from its source. Fenty noted, quote, This is the first time we've documented a glacier meltwater significantly impacting ocean temperatures so far downstream. That shows meltwater can play an important role in determining how much ocean heat ultimately reaches Greenland's glaciers." End quote. The OMG data have enough detail that researchers are beginning to pinpoint the ice loss risk for individual glaciers along the coast, according to principal investigator Josh Willis of JPL. Quote, Without OMG, we wouldn't be able to conclude that Upper Navik Glacier is vulnerable to ocean warming, whereas Cornell Glacier is less vulnerable." End quote. That's what he said. This is from the journal Oceanography, provided by University of California at Irvine. Thank you.